الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله تفيز مدين شنب Welcome back once again to our silsila, O You Who Believe. In this silsila, we take a look at those verses of the Qur'an, those ayat of the Holy Qur'an, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has called out to the believers with this beautiful address of honor, Ya أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ amanu, O You Who Believe. And we look at these blessed verses and what lessons they hold for us and what pearls of wisdom they contain within them. As the scholars say, as is mentioned, in the commentaries of these words, Ya أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ amanu, O you who believe, that whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls out with these words in the Holy Qur'an, then this is to alert the believers to the fact that there is either some goodness, some bounty, some blessing, that believers should adopt and that believers should strive to work towards or there is some evil there is some negative characteristic that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is highlighting and ordering the believers to refrain from and to abstain from today inshallah we will be talking about one such verse of the holy quran which begins with the words O you who believe before looking at that verse one virtue of reciting the Ruh Sharif, peace and blessings upon our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam is reported to have said, "Whosoever recites the Ruh Sharif, peace and blessings, salawat upon me once, Allah azza wa jal showers ten blessings upon that person." Sallu ala al Habib, sallallahu taala ala Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa baraka In the Holy Quran. In Surah Al-Imran, verse number 102, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who believe, fear Allah as he ought to be feared, and ensure that you do not die except in the state that you are Muslim. In this verse of the Qur'an, Two main things have been highlighted after the address of you who believe. The first is fear of Allah. And the second, not dying except in the state of Iman. I.e. safeguarding, protecting and preserving one's Iman. With regards to the first, the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is, as is mentioned in narrations, this is the head and the fountain of all wisdom. Because this fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that attribute within the believer, is that characteristic within the Muslim. This is that quality that the mu'min, the believer has within himself, which protects him from sin, protects him from evil, protects him from negativity, protects him from disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and protects him from the punishment of the hereafter. The word taqwa itself is derived from the root which means to protect. And in terms of taqwa, the scholars have mentioned that taqwa is protecting oneself from being subjected to punishment in the hereafter. And amongst the Sahaba Kiram Muridwan, they would describe the meaning of taqwa. And they would say that taqwa which is often translated as piety or fear of Allah 
is similar to a person walking through a narrow alleyway wearing brand new expensive clothes. But this alleyway is not a clear path. The alleyway has sharp thorns coming out from both sides, making the passageway even more narrower. And they would say that the same way that a person would walk through that extremely narrow alleyway with thorns poking out from both sides, the same way that a person would walk through that alleyway protecting his clothing, ensuring that his clothing does not get caught on the thorns, protecting himself, protecting his clothing from being impaled, from being torn, from being ruined by those thorns in that pathway. The same way that a, a person would walk through that alleyway protecting his clothing from thorns. When a person walks through this world, walks through this dunya, spends time in this world, and protects himself from sins, from evil, from negative characteristics, from anything that will lead to the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a cautious way, that is taqwa. That is fear of Allah. That is consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing that Allah is always watching. And when a person is successful in embedding this quality within his heart, then that person even when nobody is watching, even when he's in a room all alone, even when nobody's at home, even when the door is locked, even when he believes that nobody is with him, nobody is watching him. And if he was to sin, no human being would be aware of that sin. Even at that stage, the person knows in his heart, believes in his heart, has conviction that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching him. He is conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even in that state, when he has the opportunity to commit sin, when he has the chance to commit sin in such a way that his parents won't know about it, his brothers and sisters won't know about it, his friends and teachers won't know about it, but yet still he refrains from that sin. He abstains from that sin. Why? Because of taqwa. Because of the fear of Allah. This fear of Allah is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering the believers to adopt in this particular verse of the Qur'an. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqullaha haqqa tuqati O you who believe, fear Allah as he ought to be feared. In the next part of the verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And do not die, do not leave this world, except in the state that you are believers. i.e. die in the state that you take your iman with you into the grave. Allahu Akbar. Such a powerful message. Such a powerful statement. Because after all, it is Iman which is our greatest treasure. And if a person is successful in taking his Iman, taking his faith with him into the grave, if a person is successful in preserving and protecting his Iman and taking it with him into the next world, then that person will be guaranteed paradise. But on the other hand, on the contrary, if somebody, Allah, Allah forbid, loses his Iman and leaves this world as a disbeliever, leaves this world without his Iman intact, then such a person will face the torment and the punishment of the hellfire forever and ever and ever. We all need to constantly fear the independent nature and the hidden divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's not one person living in this world today who knows for sure whether they will die with Iman or not. So we need to ask ourselves this question. Have we ever thought about what we need to safeguard our Iman? Have we ever reflected and thought about what steps we need to take? to protect our Iman, to ensure that we are successful in taking this treasure with us into the grave. Well, there's many, many things which we, we worry about, which we are focused, our attentions towards, our efforts towards. We're worried about money, we're worried about finances, we're worrying about our bank balances, we're worrying about where the money is going to come from to buy the latest phone, the latest laptop. We're worried about how we're going to pay the bills at the end of the month. Even though our risk 
our sustenance, our income, has already been guaranteed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guaranteed a certain amount of risk, a certain amount of sustenance for every single being in creation. And it's not possible for a person to leave this world without consuming the amount of risk that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destined for him. Risk is guaranteed. So why is it when it comes to our sustenance, our risk, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guaranteed for us, we are putting in so much effort, we are putting in so much time, we are exerting so much of our efforts in trying to attain that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already guaranteed for us. And when it comes to that treasure, about which we have no guarantee, the treasure of Iman, we have no guarantee that we will die as Muslims. This treasure of Iman, when it comes to this, unfortunately, it seems that the majority of Muslims don't seem to be worried about safeguarding their Iman. Don't seem to be worried about putting steps in place to safeguard our Iman. And this is why, unfortunately, there are many people out there who because of the society that we live in today, the materialistic society that we live in today, because of evil influences on our society, because of the evils of films, music, movies, people are uttering words which, is, which actually lead them to come out of the folds of Islam without them even realizing it. And we should be scared, we should fear the hidden divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just because we might be apparently acting upon the deen, again there's no guarantee that we'll be successful in safeguarding our iman. There are many many incidents narrated about those people who lost their iman despite previously being pious and religious people. Imam Abdul Rahman ibn Jawzi rahimahullah ta'ala narrates that Sayyidina Imam Hassan al-Basri radiyallahu anhu he was sitting with his friend and his companions when some people passed by and they were dragging a corpse they were dragging the dead body of a murdered man when Sayyidina Hassan al-Basri radiyallahu anhu he glanced at the face of the corpse he instantly fell to the ground unconscious when he recovered Somebody asked him why he had reacted in such a way. He replied that at one time, this murdered person whose corpse is being dragged across the floor today, at one time, he used to be a devout worshipper and a very pious man. This once pious worshipper once left his home to offer salah. On the way, he caught sight of the queen girl. And immediately, his heart was overcome with a burning love for her. Falling further into this fitna, this tribulation, this calamity, he asked that girl to marry him. She set one condition. The condition was that if he wanted to marry her, Allah, he must first must renounce the religion of Islam. That man was able to control himself for some time, but eventually he was overcome by lustful desire, which led him to leave Islam. When he went to the girl to tell her that he had accepted her condition, he had Ma'adullah left Islam and now because the condition was fulfilled she must marry him. When he went to her to tell her this she said to him in a state of anger and fury O oh, unfortunate man there is absolutely no goodness in you. You have not even been loyal to your religion of Islam. So how would you ever be loyal to anyone else? How can I expect that you would be loyal to me? O oh, ill-fated man you have surrendered your lifelong worship and your spiritual efforts and even your religion just because you became infatuated in your lust for me. But listen, you have left Islam, but Alhamdulillah, the girl said Alhamdulillah and embraced Islam. And then she narrated a dream. She said, I saw a dream in which I was falling into the fire of hell. But suddenly someone came to me and said, don't be afraid. That man has been made a fidya, a compensation for you. I, he will enter hell instead of you. She says that in that dream, she then saw that pathetic would-be lover being brought forward to be thrown into hellfire in her place. And she says that in that dream, a respectful man took her to paradise. 
where she saw the following words from Surah Al-Ra'ad, verse number 9. يَمْحُ اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيُثْبِتْ وَعِنْدَهُ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ Translation from Kanzul Iman. Allah erases and confirms whatever He wills. And only with Him is the real script. Sayyidina Imam Hassan al-Basri radiallahu anhu, after releasing the whole incident, he then said to his companions, that fortunate girl became a Muslim, but the unfortunate, once pious worshipper who left Islam became a disbeliever after being overwhelmed by his lust has today been murdered. Dear views of channel, we should be scared. We should fear the hidden divine decree of Allah Azza wa Just because we think we're acting upon the deen today, it doesn't necessarily mean we will die with Iman. Especially if we are not worried and concerned about taking steps to preserve and protect our Iman. Imam Ahl Sunnah, Asha Imam Ahmad Raza Khan, alayhi wa rahman, he writes that a person who does not have the concern for safeguarding his Iman, a person who is not worried, who is not concerned, about protecting and preserving his Iman, there is a real danger that such a person might actually lose his Iman at the time of death. It's mentioned regarding Sayyidina Fudayl bin Ayaz radiallahu anhu that he once came to one of his students at the time of death and he started to recite Surah Yasin. His student responded to Sayyidina Fudayl radiallahu anhu and said to him, stop reciting Surah Yasin. He then advised him to recite the kalima. But the student said, Ma'adullah, I will never recite this kalima and I have nothing to do with it. Ma'adullah. And that student died after uttering these words, after rejecting the kalima. The Sayyidina Fudayr radiallahu anhu, he was extremely shocked by the bad end of the student. And he wept for 40 days because of this. After 40 days, he dreamt that the angels were dragging that student towards the hellfire. Sayyidina Fudayr radiallahu anhu inquired from him, asked him the question, what was the reason for you losing your faith at the time of death? You had a high rank amongst my students. You were one of the intelligent students, one of the high ranked students. He replied and said, I was deprived of my Iman at the time of death because of three reasons. Number one, tale telling. Meaning, he would say one thing to his friends and something else to his teacher. Or he would go to his teacher and tell tales, inform the teacher about things that the students had been doing, and in reality they hadn't been doing those things. And he would tell students certain stories about each other to make them have hatred for one another. The second thing, he said jealousy. He said that he would be jealous of his friends. Meaning if his, if his fellow class fellows, his fellow students, his friends would be blessed with any virtue, would gain any blessing, any type of blessing, then he would wish in his heart that that blessing would be taken away from that person and given to him. Jealousy. And number three, drinking alcohol. He says that I used to drink one glass of alcohol every year as per the doctor's prescription, as a remedy, as a cure for one of my illnesses. Because of these three reasons, he says that he was deprived of reciting the kalima at the time of death. He was deprived of taking his iman safely with him into the hereafter. In a hadith reported on the authority of Sayyidina Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa said, Quickly increase your good deeds before those fitnas, those trials and tribulations, which will be like the darkest parts of the night. A person will be a believer in the morning and a disbeliever at night. A person will be a believer at night and a disbeliever in the morning. And he will sell his deen, he will sell his faith for the temporary luxuries of this world. Allahu Akbar. Our beloved Prophet ﷺ warned us of this fitna, warned us of the tribulation of people losing their iman, losing their faith. And what was the state of our pious predecessors, rahimahumullah ta'ala, when it came to protecting their faith, the concern that they had 
and the worry that they had for safeguarding the Iman. Sayyidina Imam Al-Ghazali rahimahullah ta'ala, he quotes the saying of one pious saint. That this pious saint, he said, if I had the choice, he said, if I had the choice between either getting death with Iman at the door of my room, or getting shahada martyrdom at the main entrance of my house, slightly further away, despite the fact that martyrdom is an enormous blessing. What choice is he faced with? He said, if I was given the choice between either getting death with Iman at the door of my room, so you can imagine he's in his room, and he's got two options, two choices. The first choice is death with Iman at the door of his room. The second choice is to go a little bit further and to go to the entrance of the house. And upon reaching the main entrance of the house, he would be blessed with martyrdom, with shahada. He says that despite the fact that martyrdom is an enormous blessing, I would immediately accept death with iman at the door of my room. Why? He says because it might be that in the distance between the door of my room and the main entrance of my house, in reaching that main entrance of my house, my heart might change and I might be deprived of even dying with iman. Allahu Akbar. And Sayyidina Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimahullah, a great wali of Allah, a great scholar of Islam, he was once seen crying and weeping all night. And he was asked, are you weeping due to the fear of sins? Due to the fear of being punished for sins? Sayyidina Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimahullah, he picked up a splinter and he said to that person, the person asking the question, he says, sins have even less value than this splinter in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal is the all-forgiving. He said, I am crying from fear of losing my iman. This was the mindset of our pious predecessors. Uh, but unfortunately today, when we look at the society and the way the Muslims are convicting themselves these days, it seems like the Muslims of today have become so overwhelmed by the love of this world. It seems like the Muslims of today have no worry and concern for safeguarding the Iman. We need to realize that if we shed tears with sincerity in the fear of Allah this might be the means of us attaining the pleasure of Allah And the biggest disaster that one can possibly face that one can possibly come across is losing his Iman at the time of death. So how can we protect our faith? Hujjatul Islam, Imam Muhammad Ghazali rahimahullah, he advises us and he teaches us how we can protect our faith. So in this silsila, we've talked about the verse of the Holy Quran in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders the believers to fear him and to safeguard their Iman, to not die except in the state of being believers. And in this sense that we've learned about the importance of protecting our Iman. But how can we practically protect our faith? What practical steps can we take to safeguard our Iman? Imam al-Ghazali rahimahullah says, If you wish to remain safe from death without Iman, spend your entire life obeying Allah Azza wa Jal. Save yourself from every type of sin. Your weeping and tears must be prolonged and you must remain sad all the time. He further states, you should busy yourself preparing for a good end. Busy yourself in the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal. Remove the love of the world from your heart. Protect your body and your heart from sin. Protect yourself from looking at bad people. Because the heart is affected by this and your mind will turn towards them. So these are some practical tips, practical advice in how we can safeguard and protect our iman. Busy ourselves with the remembrance of Allah Azza Ensure that we are performing our salah on time. Ensure that we spend our days and nights remembering Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, fulfilling our obligations. We should ensure that we save ourselves from all types of sin. And we should ensure that we adopt good company. Because even looking at bad people can affect the heart and lead to a death without iman. Dear viewers of the channel, in today's silsila, in today's episode of All You Who Believe, 
we've learnt about the importance of protecting our Iman and how essential it is that we take these steps to safeguard our Iman and the Iman of our family members and the Iman of those around us. Another way that we can practically safeguard our Iman and protect our Iman is to come into the beautiful motherly environment of Dawat Islam by adopting good company, by attending the Ijtima'at of Dawat Islam, by continuing to watch motherly channel, by increasing our Islamic knowledge, increasing our knowledge of the Quran, the Sunnah, the Hadith, knowing more about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what commandments He has given us in the Holy Quran, what He has forbidden us from, and acting upon those commandments, our faith will become stronger, and inshaAllah we will be successful in taking our faith safely into the grave with us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to take these steps to protect our Iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us death with Iman in the beautiful city of al madinah al Munawwara. Ameen. Bijahi Nabi al Amin. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al Habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barakatuh.